Um, next up we have um, Susie Orbach. Uh, I'm really pleased to introduce her. Um, it's fantastic to have her here with, uh, with us tonight. She's a psychotherapist, activist, uh, and author of a great many books, um, including Fat as a Feminist Issue uh, and Bodies, and is also the founder of Anybody. And she's going to be talking about her work, which speaks to some of the themes in Tansy's book. Thank you. Um, I was trying to figure out what I'm doing here. And I mean, what is a shrink doing at an event around fashion? And um, I suppose the, the place I have to start is that I became interested, I became a psychotherapist out of trying to understand how the outside world gets inside of us and creates a setup inside of us where we're engaged inadvertently in aspects of our own subordination. And it's not such an easy aspect to talk about. And it's not that what I do as a, as a shrink is propaganda in the therapy room. But in order to understand why people do things that are so obviously not in their interests, um, psychoanalysis was a way of me and, and a whole group of people trying to understand the, the, the development of psyches that fitted, if you like, and made us feel like we were part of the world and made us feel that our actions were actions of individual agency and power when in fact they were often quite the opposite. So in that work, I became very, very interested in women's relationship to their bodies because um, bodies are where we live and I was, this is going back a very long time ago, but I need to kind of situate myself. Um, and I was, I was interested in the whole relationship of women as nurturers, women as having to produce bodies that people admire, women as having to produce bodies that they feel okay about, and the whole relationship of the production of a body and women's sense of identity. Um, and Tansy's book raises issues that, I, I was just so delighted to read it, and I'm only a third of the way through because I only got to start on it uh, today, and it's, it's just such an incredible accomplishment, really, to put together uh, the role, to use this lens to look at what's happened, what, what's the neoliberal agenda, and what's it done in relation to the production of, to agriculture, to the production of clothes, to, to the production of a whole sense of how we belong in our society, and, and then raising what it means to us. Um, and I suppose I feel very vindicated in a way for the campaigns I've been involved with in anybody and with endangered bodies. Because when I went to Ken Livingstone when he was mayor of um, uh, London many years ago now, too many years ago, which and it was kind of around the same time as um, the model health inquiry. And I said, what the hell are you doing funding London Fashion Week in the way you're funding it rather than Produce, because what you're, produce, what, what you're funding is clothes for the catwalk as opposed to the actual, um, the women who are producing those clothes and the women who are buying those clothes don't need funding actually. You're supporting the wrong end of the industry and, and those kinds of things. I was looked at like I was a mad person. Why is this a political question? So I think today shows us that actually all the various agendas from the model agency, from the agriculture, from the... Um, from what's been happening in Bangladesh and Pakistan and China and Turkey, all of these agendas are coming together. And I think it's time to reinvigorate this, all of these things, and not feel ashamed that we're really interested in these kinds of issues, actually. Um, and from a sort of clinical perspective, what's been occurring to me, looking at how, how uncomfortable and how increasingly uncomfortable um, girls and women and, and, and now boys are beginning to feel about their bodies is the way in which um, the industry is so rapacious 
the style industries, which are absolutely huge industries. Um, they're not trivial. As Tansy points out, the, the, the richest people in the world occupy num the, 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 the number three and number four. The richest people in the world are from the fashion industry. This is not a trivial industry. We tend to think of the steel industry as being a real industry. We tend to think of, of um, telecommunications as being a real industry. Fashion is also one of those industries, and I think we need to understand it. And that one of the ways they've done that to us, or the way that we've been engaged in this problem, is that fashion is now fashioning our bodies. I mean, we no longer have a thing called a body, I think, that produces, that we use, certainly not in the West, in very large numbers, to produce things. What many of us are encouraged to do and invited to do is to use our bodies to produce our own bodies. Is we, we, We're supposed to turn our body into an object that of production so that the, one of the big growth industries apart from fashion is the cosmetic surgery industry. So we're supposed to re-sculpt our bodies and the, the, it, it grows at the most extraordinary rate, stealing every aspect of, of girls' experience of their bodies so that now they don't even feel okay about their labias and they're wanting labiaplasties at the age of 11, 12, 13, 14. Not just breast reconstructions, but all sorts of things. And so, what I think we need to take on here is that we've got to rethink the whole place of the body as citizens, not as consumers, and I really like your idea about that. And that we have to think about what, was, what kind of ways can we occupy our own bodies collectively and individually. I think um, that's, that's a, a slogan ever since Occupy happened, is that we've got to occupy everything, we've got to refashion, we've got to rechange what, what it means to constitute having a body. And it doesn't mean by being massive exercise, it doesn't mean by going to the gym, it doesn't mean by, by buying more and more clothes, it means by actually daring to have the bodies that, that, that we are given and to live within them and to fight for conditions with our own bodies that, that make fashion the fashion industry okay, that make the workers okay, and that make all the allied style industries be things that can be sustainable rather than things that have to be destroyed. I'm going to stop there because <coughs> I've run out of steam. <laughs>